you know, we lose kids. And it's like these kids, these kids so easily could have been lost for good. And just this weird set of circumstances. Same with, I mean, my daughter was not obviously academically lost, but she was emotionally lost. And she could have been lost for good, too. I mean, I've known lots of smart kids that ended up destroying themselves one way or another. Here, for instance. But, but something happened and saved these kids. We don't save most of these kids. They're no different than kids that you can find in um, Odie Wyatt, at Eastern Hills, at South Hills, at, at, <laughs> that you can find at Heights and Pasco, that you can find at Carroll South Lake. They're the lost kids, they're the ghosts, the kids that didn't quite make it, the kids that didn't fit, the kids that caused problems. And um, we lose them because we don't have the will to, to save them. Going to Casada has. Going to Casada has. Going to Casada has opened a lot of doors for me that wouldn't have been opened otherwise. Going to Casada has really helped me a lot. It has made me work harder. It has given me a new chance to succeed in school. It's showing me what great teachers can be and what I can be. It's helped me open my eyes and follow my dream. It has given me a second chance. Going to Casada has changed my life. It's changed my life completely really just changed my life. Has changed my life. Completely changed my life. Has changed my life completely. Has changed my life very much. Has changed my life forever. Kasada is the reason I'm graduating. Kasada yeah. is wonderful. Kasada is so much. I feel like I'm at home here. We're an outreach mission school. We were started in 1975 by two nuns, Sister Fulbright and Sister Bonaventure. All of the students that are here came from a previous school. Sometimes they'd been to three or four previous schools. We know everyone by name, we greet them at the doors. Our learning style is really different from traditional schools. We employ a lot of different teaching methods. We do individualized learning where the students progress at their own pace. We have a flexible half-day schedule which is really beneficial for a lot of our students. A lot of them maybe have long-term illnesses, they have children of their own, they have to work full-time. The half-day schedule helps them to achieve their goals, whereas at a regular school they might be truant all the time because they can't be there all the time. One of the things that makes us so great, I think, is because we are a small environment. A lot of our students need more attention, they need more of a family atmosphere, more support than they would get in a bigger school. And because we are small, we can, we can do that. You had struggles. I'm not denying that. Every kid who goes through any educational process struggles. The students who are here at Casada have had unique and frequently very harsh struggles. Struggles that anybody else would have said, I give up. I'm not going to do it. My niece came to live with us. She, she came from a, a, a community that was surrounded by the gang environment. Mm -hmm. She was uh, completely a part of it. I mean, she, she had grown up in that environment. She had everything about her character had, uh, was, was built around that. She had all the, the belief systems that go with it and everything else. Um, we, uh, we moved her, she came to live with us when she was 17. And the idea of getting her into school to finish her education seemed, it, I mean, my wife literally went all over uh, the DFW Metroplex trying to figure out about where we could get her into a school. And uh, public schools said that we couldn't do it because she was going to be too old by the time she graduated so she wouldn't be able to go to there. Uh, we ran every place we went to would not accept her. Wow. Um, she was testing at a seventh grade level at the time. Like I said, she, she was bouncing in and out of you know youth mental hospitals. She, you know, over a year she was in Three, three times, um, and she just couldn't, you know, get any answers. And I think part of it was because when her, when she would get out, we put her right back into an environment that that wasn't supportive enough or wasn't unique enough for her to help help her maintain um, where she was. And and like I said, when she got out the last time, I knew that if I sent her back to Bell, she would be she'd be right back in. They wanted to put him in a life skills class. Oh, uh, that was after kindergarten. Yeah. They told us that they wanted to put him in life skills 
that he, that he means, was not not teachable. Yeah, he can't be educated. He couldn't he couldn't be educated, <laughs> you know, to to read or write or do math or or any of that. That he just needed life skills. That was after kindergarten. Yes, yes ma'am. He had a kindergarten teacher who told him he was dumb. He was just taking up a space. What made him think he could learn anything? And the teacher would use Diego as an example of what not to do. Would hold him up, have him come stand before the room and try to read. And told him that all he was ever going to do would be to work in the field, so why didn't he just get started now? Now, we're not talking 19, 30, 40, or 50. We are talking 19... 2002. 2002. Oh, but he got worse. He came to a school down the street from Sada and hit a teacher like that again. He couldn't, he, what he, why was he even thinking about going to college? He wasn't even going to get out of high school. The route to recovering them as human beings is not just cognitive. They, it's not that they just need to graduate from high school. They need to learn to be a better person. I always cheered for the underdog, and that's what these students seem to be. They've already struggled, they've already had tough times, and we're here to pick them up, to educate them, and to move them forward. So I love it here because you can actually see the work that you're doing. I don't think I would be graduating um, if I would have had her and been anywhere else. I don't think she would have gone back to a conventional school. I, I wouldn't have, and um, I just wouldn't have conventional. been able to do it. But they let me know that I can do it and that they're here to help me do it. And so her being here and me being here, is it just all works out. She came in testing on the seventh grade level. She walked out testing on the eleventh grade level. In how long? In, in three months. <laughs> all she needed, and this was... Um, I, in I, three months? Yes. That is incredible. That is incredible because all she needed was an opportunity and someone to take the time to give her a chance. And we're on schedule to, for her to graduate next year okay. with a year of college <laughs> under her belt. so cool to me. Uh, it just, it's incredible. Um, it, if Casada wasn't here, so much of what she has ahead of her just wouldn't be hers. I went originally to talk to Casada, and I was so hesitant because we'd had so much trouble in all other schools. And so I was like, you know, I just don't know if he can survive in your school, are you sure that, you know, because he was in special education his entire school career. He started when he was three um, in public schools because of special needs. They don't actually have a special needs, needs program. program. So they actually said, well, let's, we'll take him on a probationary period. And so that's what we did. We started on a probationary period and there were no problems at all whatsoever. This is a system where it really just requires one thing, that we allow the heart in an equal power, to have equal power in the operation of a school as the head. That's all. And once we do that, we see in that child possibility, we see in that child hope. And I'm glad you got to see a place where they have hope for kids that so many people don't have hope for. We had uh, conferences today and, and and she said upstairs, she said, I believe that I can, Haley smart enough, I can teach her anything. And that so. is something that I have never been told by anybody. And it just, I didn't know how, you know, like, it just made me feel so And they so love good. her. And they tell her, you know, we love Haley. We love her. We love, you know, her attitude. And, and I'm like, well, I don't know what you're getting up here because I'm not getting it at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so encouraging. It, it really it is. It really is. She has, she has just given me tools in life and just like emotionally mm -hmm. that I can't repay to anybody else. And because of this school, you know, like all the teachers are here like that. All tell me, you know, I don't want to just help you graduate. I want to help you succeed in life. The original mission statement had it, they, the, the nuns had in mind that we take care of the whole child, not just their education. And we do that. We educate them, but we also try to tell them that they are worthy and that they can be whatever they want to be, and we're going to help them do it. As soon as I walked in the doors, I could tell something was different, primarily because it was quiet and people were actually working in the classrooms. Um, 
And the spirit of the place just came across to me immediately. Within 15 minutes of being here, I was in tears because it was so evident that actual lives were really being changed through the education process and the people who give their time here. If we could uh, find a way to uh, bring this program to scope, uh, it would be a, a real boon to uh, reforming educa public education uh, for so many students because so, uh, such a high percent of public school students are not performing, they're underperforming. Uh, and I believe this is a model that could solve a lot of those problems.